mind being I invented you. You believe in God, Charles? Sure, I believe in myself. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? <laughs> which one? Are you Jesus Christ? Which, which, which Jesus? <laughs> There's all kinds of Jesuses. There's a black Jesus down in Florida. He's having a good time. There's a Mexican Jesus in Mexico. I mean, there's all kinds of this Jewish Jesus. I mean, Jesus, you know. There's all kinds of Jesus coming back everywhere. And nothing can stop it. It's a consciousness that lives in your mind. Da, 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 you know. I apologize. I really do for subjecting you to that. Um... But did you hear what that raving lunatic said? Which Jesus? There's all kinds of Jesus. Which one? Which one? <laughs> Je Jesus is coming back. Nothing can stop it. Raving lunatic. But yet, what he said. Which Jesus? Which Jesus? Which one? Which one? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Please follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure, check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove, okay? <laughs> this robot mind wants to... Um, um, harass things where we confront Satan's church. Well, let's give him a little bit more ammo, huh? Yeah, yeah. First Corinthians chapter 8. First Corinthians chapter 8. Be a Berean. Follow me along. Word for word. Verse by verse. Charles Manson that was, obviously. Which Jesus? Which Jesus? The Jesus of the Mormons? Hmm? The Jesus of the uh, Jehos? Here, here, let's let's get a little, let's, come on, come on, let's do this. How about the Jesus of the Baptists? Hmm? How about the Jesus of the Charismatics? How about the Jesus of the Catholics? Hmm? You know, the Trinity. The three persons that make one God. And you know what? Trinitarianism is as crazy as that raving lunatic is. With all those facial <laughs> things that he did. That is what Trinitarianism is. Believing that three persons make one God. Okay? The belief in a trinity. That three persons make one God is as crazy as Charles Manson is. Yeah, yeah, you heard me right. Want me to say it again? Yes. You're a Trinitarian. You believe in three persons make one God. You're as crazy as Charles Manson is. Oh, Yeah, take offense in gates. Take offense, take a gate. Okay? But which Jesus? Hmm? The second person of a three-person trinity? Huh? A lesser God? Which Jesus? Which Jesus? 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. For though there be that are called little g gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, and of course, as you heard in that video, that little clip, and again, I'm sorry I subjected you to that, but the point was, coming from that wicked, devil-infested lunatic, which Jesus? And of course, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. The interviewer asked that raving lunatic, do you believe in God? Sure, I believe in myself. Uh, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm-hmm. Which Jesus? But to us, there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, 
By whom are all things and we by him? Bre See, brother, there's two right. No, 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 no. No. It's one God, okay? God. Okay, well, let, let's look at that verse again. But to us there is but one, one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. There's one God, okay? The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, one in the same, okay? One in the same, all right? Not this three-person nonsensical lunatic asylum trinity no but that that's not going to be that's not the focus of this video okay there will be things in the description box for you to where we discuss this about the ludicrous insanity of the trinity and like i said in the previous video i don't really blame nominal these nominal christians for their nonsensical belief in the trinity you don't know. Because, again, historically speaking. And you know what? Catholics themselves won't even dispute this. That the very first thing that the Roman Catholic religion... Which, which one, right? Because remember, Catholic means what? Universal. Universal. Catholicos. There's the uh, Irish Catholic. Okay? And we have to be we have to be realistic here. There is the Hispanic Catholic. Hispanic uh yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Catholicism that is believed on and practiced within the Hispanic um kindred differs from Irish and even traditional Roman Catholicism. Did you know that? And then again, there's, of course, the German Catholics. The German Catholics. Yeah, Lutheranism, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But see, is everywhere, he's coming back. Which Jesus? There's all kinds of Jesuses. Huh? What about the Jesus of King James Bible and Christians? Which Jesus? Which Jesus? Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter... This is not the, the main point of this video. Okay, but this has to be addressed. This has to be addressed. Okay? Because there is a plethora, cafe, of Jesuses that you are being bombarded with. Okay? And... You need, it's one thing to believe in Jesus. You need to believe on the actual Jesus of the scriptures, okay? Uh, God in three persons, Trinity, that's not the true Jesus, okay? To hell with your Trinity, Catholic. To hell with your Trinity, okay? To hell with your Trinity. That's not the true Jesus. But like I said, from the inception of the Roman Catholic Church, or the Roman Catholic religion, you know, the Catholicos, everybody has a Jesus. Um, from their inception, the number one thing that they started to teach and to preach was one God comprised of three persons. And like I told you, Catholics themselves won't even dispute that. Because it is a historical, provable fact that from the beginning, the beginning, the doctrine that they pushed the most was that of a three-person trinity. And the trinity teaching goes back to Babylon with Nimrod, Semiramis, and Ninus, the father, the mother, and the son. Okay? That wicked trinity. And... Of course, there's the Egyptian trinity, Isis, Horus, Set. Okay, but see, the trinity doctrine and teaching has reached its perfection in Catholicism. Okay, you robot mind, you want to attack things, uh, the brethren, because uh, we speak out against Satan and his church. Well, here you go. Okay, here you go. Now, 
Trinity is satanic. <coughs> to hell with the Trinity. Because that's where it's from. It's from hell. Okay? There is only one guy. Atheists and Muslims have it right. One plus one plus one. I, you know, I never finished high school. I don't even have a good enough diploma. But I, uh, 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 uh. there are some out there who's like, well, there are some mathematical. Stop. Just stop. Okay. Stop. Don't play their game. Don't play their game. One plus one plus one equals three. And a person is what? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? It's not funny. But see, Catholicism from its inception, from its inception, check that out yourself. Look into the very early church fathers and some of the first well-known documented writings that is associated with Catholicos. You're going to find what? Teachings about a God in three persons, which is going to be on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. What is it? The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. Okay? There's your trinity. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet. All right? But see, the point is, the point is that we're going to get at today is the bombardment of the Jesuses that you are receiving today. There's a, like that wicked, crazy psychopath who's in hell uh, said, what's Jesus? The Jesus that's given to you in the NIV? Because that's not the Jesus of the scriptures. Ephesians. Chapter 4, verses 4 and verse 6. There's one body, the body of Christ, the church of the living God. And one spirit, capital S, our Lord. People are like, well, okay, if there's one spirit, how can that one spirit be in me and be in you? I don't know how God does that. But that's what it says. It's one spirit. But Brad, in other videos, you talk, one spirit that, see, the capital S, that's God himself, okay? Other people like Smiley Dave say that the capitalization of spirit is not that big of a deal. It's a, it's a very big deal. It's a very big deal. That capital S, the spirit, is God himself, okay? Yes, there are other spirits out there. Yes, there is the spirit of tr truth and the spirit of error, okay? And God is a spirit. <laughs> the Bibles take out the A. God is spirit. See, there is only one spirit that comes from God. The capital S spirit right there. Okay? That's the Lord himself. There's only one God. Okay? There's only one God. Three persons that make one God. That's lunacy. That's Charles Manson lunacy. Okay? That's Charles Manson lunacy. All right? But there is only one God. So there is one spirit. Okay? There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Okay? He is our hope. He is the blessed hope. He is the resurrection. Okay? All right? The calling. The crucifixion. Okay? One calling. You got to go to the cross. All right? One Lord, one faith, mm. one baptism. And of course, the Catholics, you know, when they do baptism, you need to be baptized in water. No, no. Baptism, identification. Okay? Baptizo. You want to get in Greek, huh? Baptizo. And you look into what baptizo is. It's about the, they, they give the analogy of taking a cloth and dipping it into a dye. And it becomes identified because of the dye that it was dipped in. Okay? But to see, see, and, and, and that's the, um, the uh, rabbit trail track that you can get into when you mess around with the Greek. Which one? Which one? Which one? 
Which Hebrew? Which Greek? The oldest and best. When you hear that, know this. That when people tell you, like with their Bibles, oh, it's based off of the Hebrew and Greek, like our brother did the other day. It's like, well, which one? Which Hebrew and Greek? You know how many there are? You know? Which, which of the Texas Receptus? You know how many there are? Okay? All right? Again, this is not the point of this video. Okay? But there is what? There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And that faith that was once delivered unto the saints. One faith. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You talk about a statement of exclusivity. Oh. But Christianity. <laughs> there's, the, there's the moron Jesus, there's the Jeho Jesus, there's the Baptist Jesus, there's the Methodic Jesus, and there's all kinds of Jesuses within the universal Catholicos. Huh? You got the Roman, you got the German, you got the Irish, you got the Hispanic. Okay? And all, oh, oh, and all, oh, you know, there's all kinds of Jesuses. There's all kinds of Jesuses. And a majority, about 99.9% .9 of what was mentioned, um, <laughs> is, is Trinitarian. And then you got, uh, you know, the Catholics saying that what, what combines us, and this is in Vatican II, what, can, what brings us all together is we believe in one God in three persons, which is a doctrine that they started preaching from their inception, which is contrary to Scripture. <laughs> like I said, you, you run into a Christian, most Christians that you're going to meet that at least purport to, you know, well, yeah, they are Christians. Uh, they're going to be Trinitarian, okay? They are. They are. And then when you... <laughs> I. I wouldn't recommend, you know, when I've talked with people, I've, I've done this, and the Trinity comes up with talking with someone and witnessing, I spit. That gets, that gets people's attention. Now, the one uh, gal that I did that in front of, she kind of backed away. It's like, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Trinity is satanic. Yeah. It gets their attention. Then again, that's, that's you know, I, I'm not holding anything back. I'll give you all the fuel, Catholic, to attack me for attacking your, your God, which is Satan. Here we go. One God and Father of all, verse 6, who is above all and through all and in you all. So he's in everybody. No. Ephesians is written unto whom? We who are of the church of the living God. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, he is in you all. All of us who are saved, okay? You read the whole chapter on your own time, okay? All right? And, of course, go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. This, this is just a gleaning. This is just a light gleaning. There will be things in the description box for you, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 on to verse 6. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Hey, black Hebrew Israelite. Hey, Brizraelite. Hey, Calvinist. Where all that nonsense is stemmed from. Who will have all men to be saved. <laughs> Who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. And he is the way the truth, and the life. And sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Only one. The authorized version of the scriptures. Mm. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Not Mary. See, the Catholics... Um, Semiramis, uh, the, there are the names the Queen of Heaven, scriptural. Scripturally, the word, the, the name Semiramis does not appear in the scriptures. No, it does not. But Queen of Heaven does. 
Okay, Diana of the Ephesians does. Okay, that's the Roman Catholic Mary. They tell you that we can't go to Jesus personally, but you got to go to his mother. And his mother takes your prayers onto Jesus. It, it's, it's wicked. It's filth. Okay, again, I, I'm going to give you Catholics. Oh, yeah, you, this, this robot mind. <laughs> who, who, um, yeah, I give you a lot of ammunition. Come on, all right? But there's only one mediator, and it's not Mary. Our Lord Jesus Christ was God our Father, okay? Verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And now, let's go to the, and of course, the Johannian comma which is not in the oldest and best manuscripts. <laughs> Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. Smiley Dave from Chick Publications, who doesn't get mad. That guy wouldn't get mad even if he smacked his thumb with a hammer or dropped the couch on his favorite toe. But if someone of the Church of the Living God has a question, questions him, then he gets angry. Oh, boy, in that Italian sign. But I bring up Smiley Dave for this alone. His work on the Sinaiticus thing, second to none. I, I haven't read anything of it, but, I mean, he, he really did, you know, a very good job on that. Okay? He did. He did. Got to give the credit where it's due. Okay? All right? But when someone says to you, because, see, they're trained. They're trained like that. From the Jesuit trained cemeterians, or the cemetery trained Jesuitarians, however colorful way we want to say it. Okay? They're trained. Because in order to be a Christian, you have to have credentials for man, remember. You see how this system works? Okay? Okay, setting up a priest, or, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, an ordained pastor in a building. This, this, is what, this is what you're being bombarded with. Okay? And it's getting, it's, 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 it, oh, it's so bad right now. And you know what, brethren? It's just going to keep getting worse. We've got to fight the good fight. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. We're outnumbered. <laughs> We're outnumbered. And remember, don't forget this. Satan's going to win some battles. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Brother, sister, we, we, can't, we can't beat the artificial intelligence mind here. We can't do it. There are some who can, but they're working for the Vatican. The coadjutors, okay? The coadjutors. And interestingly enough, the coadjutors don't get their stuff messed with, whereas we of the Church of the Living God do. That's not, the, I mean, others get their stuff messed with, but uh, like I'm saying, Satan is going to win some battles. He is. He is. But the Lord wins the war. It's not actually a war even as we as we come to have known what war is because of the Vatican. Okay? Because of the Vatican. It's not actually a war. Satan is, can only do what God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, excuse me, our Lord Jesus Christ allows him to do. That's it. That's all Satan is able to do. What our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, allows him to do. That's it. That's all he can do. And he's been given this world for the sake of judgment. All right? <laughs> yeah, excuse me for that little... Okay, like I said, sometimes the mind goes uh, faster than my mouth, or, the, or vice versa, okay? But the Johannian comma which isn't in the Bibles, in a majority of them. Or if they are, they're in brackets. Does, and it, what does it say? 
not in the oldest and best manuscripts. What are they saying? In the Sinaiticus and Vaticanus that are in the custody of Rome. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Three persons, Brad. Uh, no, it doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say that at all. It says that these three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? But see, what has happened, what is happening, and what is rampantly getting out of control, you know, um, and I, I got to tell you, too, this whole thing, too, about the King James Bible believing movement. Now, I'm for that people read the authorized, obviously, obviously. But this thing called the King James Bible believing movement has become just another denomination. Hey, prove me wrong. Please, please. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. It's now just another denomination. And there are different sects, S-E-C-T-S, within King James Bible believing Christianity. Look at it. Look at it. A majority of them, too, <laughs> that I know of, have roots in Ruckmanism. And that's something. And they're divided. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not funny. It isn't funny. But I mean, when you, I mean, when you just sit there, like I tell, like I keep telling you, people, this is theater. It's theater. Look, look at all the thespians, those who dance and strut their stuff upon the stage. Full of sound and fury that signify nothing. Okay, look at it. Look at it for what it is. Okay? Oh. We're not, it's not a, a denomination. There's one God, there's one faith. There's one faith. And a question that I've been asked many times. Why is Christianity so divided? Paul answers that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You are carnal, which is the problem with everything. This. This. This is the problem. Flesh is the problem. And Satan and his ministers are all about flesh. All about flesh. Flesh is the problem. That's why we are have to have a war. That's why we are told to mortify, put down, to kill the flesh. And not like the Catholics where they get their little cat of nine tails and whip themselves. That, that's r ridiculous. That's, that's Charles Manson insanity. Okay, no, 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 we are to put down, we are to kill the affections and the lusts that come from this, because this gets us in trouble every time. Does it not? This has driven a wedge between many of us. And that's how it is. I wish it weren't so with some of us. Some of you. But that's the way it is. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. And with the plurality of Jesuses out there, many Christs. Hmm? Matthew chapter 24. We're just going to look at this briefly because this is... Matthew chapter 24 has everything to do with the time of Jacob's trouble. It's describing what's going on during the time of Jacob's trouble. 
Okay, the lead up to it is Matthew chapter 23, which gives us the spiritual condition before the redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble. But we're going to read here really quickly, verses 4 and 5. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I am Christ. Christ means anointed one. Okay, Jesus, Jehovah saves. Christ, anointed one. Okay, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. All right? God manifest in the flesh. Okay? Jehovah saves. Christ, the anointed one. Christ means anointed one. Okay? All right? Now, let's skip a little to verses 15 on to verse 24. And here we're going to be going into our main subject matter. Okay? Verses 15 on to verse 24. When ye therefore shall see... The abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation. Spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. People say, well, that's an image or an idol, uh, like a statue that's going to be in the third rebuilt temple. No, no. This is a man. This is a person. Okay? The abomin I know they're not capitalized. I, I, I see that, okay? But this, is, he, our Lord is talking about a man. That man of sin, the son of perdition. That is what he is talking about in verse 15, okay? That's what Daniel is talking about, okay? That is what Daniel is talking about. When ye, who are the ye, okay? Who are the ye? This is Matthew chapter 24. This has nothing to do with us today. Nothing. There's instruction in righteousness in here, which we are looking at it for. Yes, doctrinally, this has absolutely nothing to do with us. Nothing. This is about the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 24. Okay? This is where psychopaths, like, uh, you know, there's the Southern Baptists, there's the Independent Fundamental Baptists, okay? Who, uh, like uh, Andrew Snake, who likes to talk about, you know, how um, uh, creations are going through the Great Tribulation and stuff like that. They come here. This has nothing to do with us or for us, the Church of the Living God, the Body of Christ. Nothing, okay? This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, all right? So the ye are who? The Hebraic Jewish people. The Hebrews, the Jews come out of Shem, not Ham or Japheth, okay? But it's the Jews. I'm going to prove that to you, okay? Okay. Remember, context. Context defines, okay? Okay? When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, the third rebuilt temple, the abomination of desolation, that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea, Judea, who dwells in Judea? Who's going to be dwelling in Judea? Who's in Judea? That be the Jews, the Hebrews. <laughs> hey, you Brizraelites. Hey, hey, you black Hebrew Israelites, you're real Jews. Why aren't you over, why aren't you go to Jerusalem? Hmm? Hmm? Why aren't you sacrificing uh, animals right now? Hmm? Hmm? Hey, wicked devils, okay? But then let them which be in Judea, okay, flee into the mountains. Why? I believe, as how it goes, first three and a half years, okay, that man of sin is going to go forth conquering and to conquer, and we're going to look at that briefly. Okay, he's going to go forth conquering and to conquer, okay? And it's going, the wall, the third rebuilt temple is going to be built in troublous times, okay? There are those out there who say that um, it, it take years and years and years to get that temple built. Th that's nonsense. Like I've told you before, Okay, the Jews are going to be financially backed and have every single resource available to them from the Vatican. They're going to get that temple up like that. 
just like that. Okay? That's stupidity. Willful ignorance. That's stupidity to have that. Well, it'll take them years and years and years to put that. To, it'll take No, 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 no. No. Remember what it says in, what is that, Genesis 11? How when man gets together, they build towers to reach to heaven, right? When man gets together, nothing, can, nothing will be impossible for them. Or this now they can do. Nothing will be withheld. You know, instead of butchering that, let's go there, hold your place in Matthew. Go to Genesis chapter 11. Okay, instead of bradizing it as I did, you know. <laughs> Incidentally, if I do that in a video from now on, like I did in the previous video, if I can remember it, I'll write it down and then put it in the comment section. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, this people is one. And they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So the Jews, during the time of Jacob's trouble, are going to be financially backed by the Vatican. Okay? Are they going to be speaking the same language? I don't know. Um, there are many of... Uh, <laughs> some of these um, coadjutors can speak Hebrew and Greek. Can write it and uh, speak it too, okay? Yeah, yeah. It's you gotta remember, my American countrymen. Um, we Americans are the exception. It is not an abnormal thing for peoples of other nations to be bilingual, to speak more than one language. Okay, uh, back during the times of the apostles, it was common that people spake more than one tongue, more than one language. Us Americans, you know, us Americans, we take everything out of the world and mess it up, okay? All right? But see, the first three and a half years, that man of sin is going forth conquering and conquer, going to destroy the economies and everything. And then at some time, he's going to go in to the holy place, abomination that maketh desolate. That's that man of sin. He's going to say, I am your Mashiach, having the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus, okay? Verse 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Sabbath day. Yes, it's going to be reinstituted. See, Christianity is the religion of the last days. Christianity is going to be the religion of the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, Brad, wait a minute. You you said the law is going to be... That, I don't say that. The scriptures say that. Yes, the law is going to return, but you got to remember Kabbalism, the Jewish Judaism that is practiced, okay, is seeking for that to, for that their Messiah will return. Yes, during the time of Jacob's trouble, the scriptural precepts of animal sacrifice is going to be reinstituted. Yes, yes it is. For the hopes that their Messiah will come. And what's going to happen is that man of sin, who's going to be Jewish, he's going to be a Hebrew, is going to go into that third rebuilt temple and say that I am your Messiah. Okay? Not all the Hebrew people are going to fall for that, which is being described here. Some will, because they will take the mark of the beast. And once you take the mark of the beast, either in your hand or in your forehead, you're done. You're going to hell. Okay? And I personally believe, like with the uh, Funvax, the VMAT2 inhibitor thing that goes to the pineal gland right here, which many people like to call the soul gland or whatever, the pineal right here. You know, the Hindus with the red dot, they're, they're your third eye right there, okay? Um, it affects that to uh, something that where it makes it harder for you to believe in God or something like that. It actually affects that. I believe that's what the uh, Mark of the Beast is also going to be doing, but perfected, okay? Besides that, the Lord says plainly, you take that mark, you're going to hell. Okay? But there are going to be Jews who are going to be like, that ain't our Messiah. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We done messed up. Okay? That's what that's talking about. All right? 
But yes, the law, Ju uh, scriptural Judaism is going to be reinstituted. But remember, remember, it's going to be Catholicism. Christianity is going to be the religion of the time of Jacob's trouble. That Christianity is, of course, going to be extreme pre-Vatican II Roman Catholicism. All under the headship of a single man. That man of sin, the son of perdition, who's going to bring all the world together because of, what, of how they're going to irritate the sons of Ishmael. Okay? That's what I believe personally. Okay? Let's continue. For then shall, verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, context. Context. Elect there. Who is this written to? This is a, Matthew chapter 24. It's written unto the Jewish people. It's describing the time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble. Israel's trouble. Okay? So, elect. Context is who? In this context is who? The Jews. Elsewhere. In the Pauline epistles, you read about the elect. Context, okay? Elect. The elected way of the cross. God chose the cross. So, to, for us today in this dispensation, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. You are elect today because you go the elected way of the cross. Hence, you are of the elect, meaning the elected way of the cross. Not Calvinism with his elect and non-elect. Not black Hebrew Israelitism, which is a form of Catholicism. Not Brizrealitism, which is also a form of Catholicism. Okay? Uh, Catholicism? Yeah, it is. Calvinism. Calvinism. Very interesting that uh, certain Brizrealites like to focus heavily on Calvinism. Hmm. Well, because they're Brizrealites, Right? You're a Brizraelite. You know, you think you're one of the elect because of the ten tribes that are in England, right? <laughs> stupid. Stupid. Yeah. It is, yeah, Calvinism, Catholicism, one and the same. Oh, <gasps> Brad, you're saying, oh, shut up. Shut up. It's one Lord. One faith. Okay? One faith. It's not more in Mormonism, <laughs> not Jehoism either. Baptists, Methodists, Catholic with their Irish, German, Lutheranism, Hispanic, Russian Orthodox. Which Jesus? Which Jesus? Verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, and so much that it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. And again, context, talking about the Jews. Okay? Talking about the Jews. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Now let's, let's talk about for us today, doctrinally for us today. And thank you to whoever it was who put that in the uh, uh, comment section. Uh, the, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 3 and 4. But I fear, now this is doctrine for us today in this dispensation. But I fear lest by any means has the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Simple, yes. What's difficult? You, your flesh. For if he that cometh preacheth, preacheth another Jesus. Which Jesus? There's all kinds of Jesuses. There are. Jehovah saves the anointed one. What, you got Buddhism, Taoism, Hinduism, all these other isms. I is man. Okay? Which Jesus? 
him I declare to you. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye have received, or if ye receive, excuse me, another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Yeah, and isn't that the case today? Someone, you're being, you're being fed all kinds of uh, other Jesuses, and all kinds of other gospels, and all kinds of other spirits. Yes, you are. And you bear with that really well. But when one of us of the church of the living God come to you, uh -huh! this world is ready. All that has to happen is we can go on hither. That's all that has to happen. Okay? It's there. All the technology, all the stuff is there. What is the Lord waiting for? I don't know. Who's, who's he going to save today that wasn't saved yesterday? Okay? All right. Now go to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Just believe. You got to keep the commandments. Uh, you're elect or you're non-elect. Whatever. Whatever. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven, kind of like an angel of light, mm -hmm, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For neither, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the Christs, the Jesuses, that so many of you are receiving today. They're of man. I is man. Ism. Now we're going to the Old Testament. Ezekiel chapter 21. Check this out. Ezekiel chapter 21. Verses 25 on to verse 27. One second, please. All right, Ezekiel 21, not 20, Brad. Verses 25 on to verse 27. Now, remember about what we looked at in uh, Matthew chapter 24, about that abomination that maketh desolate, standing in the holy place with the visage of the Roman Catholic Jesus, and like here, I'm your Messiah. And thou profane, wicked, Prince of Israel, mm. whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end. Thus saith the Lord God, remove the diadem and take off the crown. Only place here. The crown. Go to Revelation chapter 6. The crown. Hmm. The crown. Revelation 6, 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. Who opens the, 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 who opens the seals? The Lamb. Who is the Lamb? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow with no arrows. And a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. A crown. And when the Lord comes back in Revelation chapter 19, he has many crowns. I found that very interesting. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 21. Let's continue. In verse 26 again. Thus saith the Lord God, Remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. I will overturn. 
overturn, overturn it. Mm -hmm. And it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. Now, this was partly fulfilled, it was, but it will ultimately, perf in its perfection, be fulfilled <laughs> until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him at the second coming. Okay? But what has been happening is with the plurality of Jesuses that is being, you are being bombarded with, okay? Go to 1 Kings chapter 11. Now we're going to, this is actually the substance, the bulk of what uh, we, I wanted us to look at today. 1 Kings chapter 11. That was all build up to this. Okay. We are going to look at, in the, in the Torah, the first five books, you have the golden calf and worshiping of idols and stuff like that. But, a form of religiosity. We are going to look at quite a successful, deviant, destructive, and cursed form of religiosity, which we are being seen, which we see today. Okay? Those things that were written for time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans 15 verse 4. Okay, you need to read the Old Testament. Okay. And when you read the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, there is so much instruction and righteousness for us in these. Okay. But 1st Kings chapter 11. Now 1st Kings chapter 11 is very significant. Why? Because of first, uh, verse 1. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Oh boy. Yeah. To, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Moab, uh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Z Zidonians, and Hittites. So yes, King Solomon was a player. And because he went loved many strange women, what happened? Okay. He went outside of his kindred. What happened? They turned away his heart and he started making um, idols onto all these other false gods. And rightly so, rightly so, that uh, irritated the Lord. Okay, uh, let's look at that. Verses 9 on to verse 13. Okay, follow me along. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, Ugh. and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not which the Lord commanded, because he was a player, and he loved many strange women. He loved a lot of flesh. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Here's the grace. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son, Rehoboam. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Okay? All right? And what happened? Solomon, uh, peace, uh, derivative of Shalom. Solomon, Shalom, peace, a king of peace, right? He was a king of peace. There are many out there who think that Solomon is not in heaven. I think he is. I think he is. Because of some of the promises that was made of Solomon. And you read the book of Ecclesiastes. I do believe that Solomon is in heaven. I really do. If he isn't there, I would not be too surprised. But I do believe Solomon is in heaven. I do. I do. But, you know, that's, that's besides the point what I'm talking about. Now, what happened because of this? Well, the Lord God did what? Verse 14. On to verse 23 now. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon. Hadad, the Edomite, 
He was of the king's seed in Edom. Okay, verse 14. Look at verse 23. Okay? And God stirred him up another adversary, Rizon, the son of Eliada, which fled from his lord Hadad Ezer, king of Zoba. There's two. But ultimately, the one that did the most damage. 26 on to 40 now. And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Zerada, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zarua, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king because of what Solomon did. God got angry. It's like, okay, Solomon, Shalom, a derivative thereof, king of peace, okay? Okay? King of Salem, also a derivative of Shalom, peace, Salem, peace, king of peace, okay? But the ultimate king of peace will be who? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, the king of the Jews, okay? Yes, but Solomon, okay? Verse 27. And like I said, God rose up adversaries to Solomon. But Jeroboam was one of the worst. We're going to see why, okay? And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. And it came to pass that the time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. And Ahijah ca caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it, tore it, in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake. Oh, excuse me. And for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Because that they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians. There's another name for your queen of heaven, the Roman Catholic Mary. Okay? Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Now you got to remember, this is the united kingdom. But after this, because of this judgment, the divided kingdom. Well, and what was it? It was Judah and um, Benjamin. Okay? The one tribe not including Judah, okay, because the, uh, Jehoshaphat, for example, he's known as the king of Judah, and the sleazy, e evil Ahab with his whore wife Jezebel, the king of Israel, okay, the divided kingdom. This is the inception of the divided kingdom, okay. Howbeit, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, Rehoboam, okay, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. Now, Jeroboam, Jeroboam here was set up for judgment, okay? All right, let's check this out. And unto his son will I give one tribe, one tribe, okay, the tribe of Judah is from, is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah, okay? The uh, David, Solomon, okay, and that line is of Judah. The one other tribe that was always united with Judah was who? Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Paul, a Benjamite, a Hebrew of the Hebrew, okay? All right, so let's keep reading. All right, where did we leave off? Let's read verse 36 again. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light all the way before me in Jerusalem the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. 
and I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth, desireth and shalt be king over Israel. Verse 38, And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments as David my servant did, that I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. Hmm. Now, of course, the Lord knew that, Re uh, that Jeroboam here was going to blow it. But see, he's a fair and just God. Okay? If he, already knows, well, if he already knows what the outcome is, why does he go along? For example, uh, people have asked, it's like, well, okay, the Lord knew that, they were going, that the Jews were going to reject the kingdom of heaven, yet he still offered. The Lord knew that the, that the Jews were going to reject the kingdom of God, the spiritual, but yet he still offered. If he didn't, he wouldn't be a fair, just God, would he? Is, his not, is not his ways equal and ours unequal? Hmm? How many times have you withhold the truth from someone? Hmm? Because, well, they're not going to hear it anyway. Why waste my time? And there's, there's a point to that. Yes, there is about casting your pearls before swine and uh, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Absolutely. But see, his ways aren't our ways. Even though he knew, as it is prophesied in these very scriptures, that they were going to reject the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God, he still offered it. Okay? God is just. No one is going to be able to say, I never had a chance. You never gave me a chance, Lord. No one's going to be able to say that. Well, what about the infants that died, Brad? They're in heaven. They're in heaven because they, didn't, they haven't reached that uh, age of accountability. Every child that is murdered because of abortion they're in heaven. Okay? Verse 39. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt. And Shishak, king of Egypt, unto Shishak, king of Egypt. And was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. Okay? So Jeroboam, we see the inception of Jeroboam. Now, 1 Kings chapter 12, verses 25 on to verse 33. Let's, let's read a little about this, okay? And of course, what happens with Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, um, he's established as king. The kingdom was united with David and Solomon. The only time that the that Israel was united as Israel, apart from the northern and southern kingdom, the next time that Israel will be all united will be when the son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the King of the Jews, comes down uh, with us who go up with him at his second coming and Israel will be united again forever. Okay? But Jeroboam goes back. Okay, you can read this on your own time. To Rehoboam. And they're like, hey, your father made our service, servitude hard. Make it lighter for us. And we'll serve you. And then the guys who were around with uh, Solomon, you know, King Rehoboam goes to the old men first. It's like, what do you counsel? And the old men, wise, who were with Solomon, it's like, hey, you know, take it easy on these guys. Talk nicely to them. And they'll be on our side. And Rehoboam's like, okay. Then he goes to his clique, his little inner circle, his, his boys that he grew up with, okay? His little clique that will bat his head and tell him what he wants to hear. And what do they say? It's like, ah, never mind what they say. You say to these guys, oh, my little finger will be thicker than my father's loins. He chast you, chastised you with whips. I'm going to chastise you with scorpions. Yeah, going to make a name for himself. And of course, that's what Rehoboam does. And al Hades breaks loose. And of course, the separating of the kingdom. Okay? And in that separated kingdom, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, 
who is who is in scripture is branded with a stigma we're going to look at that but uh first kings 12 verses 25 on to verse 33 okay First uh, Kings chapter twelve, verses um, what? What are we looking at? Verses twenty-five on to verse thirty-four. Excuse me. And behold, men passed by and saw. Wait, wait, one, one second, one second. I'm reading in the wrong chapter. I'm in the wrong chapter. Beg your pardon, brethren. First Kings twelve twenty-five on to verse thirty-three. It's like, what are you doing? I was in the wrong chapter. I was in thirteen. 1 Kings 12, 25 on to verse 33. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim. They look in the, the in Shechem about how Diana, not Diana, oh uh, what was uh what was what was her name? Oh uh the daughter of Joseph of Israel. Oh, what was her name? I can't remember her name. Uh here, 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 one second. One, one second. Okay, well, 526, I'll, I'll get that in the description box, okay? But the daughter of uh, Israel, who went out amongst the people, and the uh, uh, son of Shechem went and laid with her and defiled her, and then um, Levi, and, um, Levi and his other brother went and just killed them all and stuff like that, looking into Shechem, okay? Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein. And went out from thence and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart. Now remember. Remember what the Lord promised Jeroboam. About if you do what's right. I'll establish your kingdom for you. Okay. Remember we, we looked at. It. Okay. And Jeroboam said in his heart. Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. And. God said to Jeroboam, we just looked at it in chapter 11. Where was that? Where he said, verse 38, And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, that I will be with, I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. Of course, the Lord knew this was going to happen. But nonetheless, he offered it to him. So Jeroboam had that promise of God. And he says, well, and Jeroboam said in his heart, now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, as they by the, the scriptures were commanded to do, where his name, we, we already read, okay? You wanted to be right with God during the law, you had to go to the Hebrew, to the Jew, to the temple, okay? The temple at Jerusalem. The actual temple. The true religion. And this is for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Okay? The one way during the dispensation of the law. The one way. Okay? Are you following me now? Okay, let's go. If this people should go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, where they were supposed to do, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. And Jeroboam was promised by the Lord the contrary to what his little wicked heart was thinking. Hmm. You think? Cherubim believed the Lord? That's a trick question. Okay? Whereupon, now remember, scripturally, doctrinally, under the law, the temple at Jerusalem, that's where you go. That's what, where I put my name there. Jerusalem. The temple at Jerusalem that Solomon built. That's, that's where they were supposed to go. Okay? Alright? That was, that was the law. There wasn't supposed to be a counterfeit. Hmm. Under the law, there was only one way. The way to Jerusalem. The law. You get, what, you get what, why we're looking at this now, right? Good. Whereupon the king took counsel. Ooh, I wonder who counseled him. 
I wonder, yes, God said, and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. It's too much for you to go the way God actually said. That way's hard. Yeah, being broken of your self-righteousness, huh? having godly sorrow and fearing him, that's too hard. Here, I present to you another way. You know, boot the door kind of thing, you see? Behold, thy gods, O Israel. And of course, right, even right there looking at it my, in my face, it, it, Exodus 32, which we'll look at, 32 verses 4 and 8. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Hold your place here. Go to Exodus 32. Exodus 32, that was a, even in this. Even in this. Even in this. Where is that? Where he said, um, uh, Aaron, in his brilliance. Okay, verse 4. Exodus 32, verse 4. And he received them at their hand. All he said, take up. Let's read the context. Verses 2 on to verse 4. Uh, verses 2 on to verse 5. Let's read on to verse 5. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a golden calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. The golden calf. And note it said, Gods. Plural. But it was only one calf. Here Jeroboam made two. Oh. oh. See, this, this thing about the Trinity has its roots in Babylon. Because of Nimrod, um, Diana of the Ephesians, and Ninus or Tammuz. Okay? <laughs> Tammuz, whatever. Okay? That's the inception. That's the beginning of the Trinity. Okay? All right? Not Scripture. All right? But gods. Single calf, but yet they called it gods. Interesting. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. Let's read verse 6. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And then, of course, we all know what happens. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. Now go back to 1 Kings 11, uh, 1 Kings 12, verse 30, uh, 29. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he, look at where he put this in, in Dan. Dan. Hmm? Dan. One of the tribes that is not mentioned of having someone sealed uh, and during the time of Jacob's trouble of the 12 tribes, Dan and who? Ephraim are not mentioned. Hmm. Hmm. Ephraim, because you read the book of Hosea. Dan, you read in the book of Judges, okay? But very interesting, very interesting. And this thing became a sin. So God had his prescribed way to go to Jerusalem, which, okay, let's say Jeroboam didn't do that. Okay, they were separate kingdoms. But God said to Jeroboam that he was going to, you do it my way, things will be well. Rehoboam. And it's like, look, you, 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 you done messed up. But because of your father, I'm going to be merciful to you. And I'm not going to take the kingdom away from you because it, the Lord had it all set up. Okay? The Lord had it all set up. All right? The Lord would have allowed people from the northern kingdom to make the trip down to where Jerusalem was. To do it according to his law. Okay? Well, here comes Jeroboam, who was given promise with his yea hath God said and made calves. And these be thy gods, O Israel. 
Which Jesus? There are many Jesuses. This, this bombardment that you are receiving is not a new thing. Okay? Verse 31. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. People go today because of Catholicism with this mindset that, okay, in order to speak God's word, you have to have a piece of paper. Well, yeah, if you want to go to the to a bale house that has a phallus on the top of it, yeah, you do got to go to the Jesuits to get a piece of paper that you're going to pay $100,000 for to say, man says I can do this. Of course. That, that mentality is from Catholicism Satan. Okay? Replacing what ought to be there. Anti, dear friend, is against, but also replaces. Okay? You know, pit putty? Okay? Antiperspirant stops you sweating, and, and instead of that wonderful natural stink, it replaces it with a almost feminine kind of stink sometime. Okay? Best, best way I can describe it. Okay? So, Jeroboam, he was against God. But obviously, when he was promised. But he also sought to replace. And, and he made an house of high places, a house of high places, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi, anyone who wanted to. Pay me $100,000, I'll give you a piece of paper, I'll teach you to go against the word of God, I'll teach you about the Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. Oh, boy. So instead of a day that you are supposed to commemorate according to the scriptures, you have the holy days in scripture that the Lord himself established. Holy days in scripture are the ones given to you in scripture, not by man. But he ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And we all, oh, we, we can go in many directions with that. Okay? See, the actual holy days are given in Scripture. Those are holy days. Okay? By God. Ordained by God. There are holy days that man has instituted, which have no right to be called holy. Because who makes them holy? God or man? Who ordained this thing like unto the great feast that is like unto the feast that is in Judah? Hmm? He did. Well, well, leave that alone. Leave that alone. I know what you're thinking, maybe, maybe, <laughs> but you know probably what I'm thinking. Shh, that that's done with. That's done with. Okay. So did, okay, let's read it. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. And he offered upon the altar, and he offered upon the altar. So did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. Not God. You got the pastors in the building who ordained them. Man, and they're the first one to tell you. I went to so-and-so university. I was trained by Jesuits. Here's my $100,000 piece of paper. Say, I know the Greek and the Hebrew. I did this. Yeah, yeah, bravo, 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 yeah. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt, burnt incense. 
And then you look at Catholicism and all their holidays, holidays versus holy day. Uh, look at all their holidays that they got. We're not going to talk about the obvious one, but I mean, look at it. You can find a list of all the hol holidays of Catholicism. Hmm? There, was, there are ordained of men. They're anti. They replace and are against. Hmm? Okay. And now, 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And behold, now what happens? Now, Jeroboam was promised, but of course, he didn't believe God. Of course not. He, uh, uh, an Old Testament example of someone who is anti-Christ, there you go, anti, against and replace, there you go. And here is the judgment against Jeroboam, who was used as judgment upon Israel. But look what's going to happen. Look what happens. Uh, 1 Kings 13, 1 and 2. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall, be he, shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And of course, you continue reading in the scriptures, this actually happens with King Josiah, a godly king, who had some problems, yes, but this prophecy takes place within scripture, okay? and polluting the altar, which Jeroboam claimed to be the altar of the Lord, and it wasn't. And they made sure to humiliate and to defile that altar by burning the priests and the men's bones upon, the, uh, upon it, to defile it. Kind of like cremation. We are, uh, we are told to be buried. But uh, men's bones were burnt on an altar to defile it? Uh, and now go to uh, 1 Kings 14, verses 7. Now that was the judgment upon the altar, okay, which was which Josiah did. You know, kind of a spit on it, okay? But now, what about Jeroboam himself? Verse, uh, chapter 14 in 1 Kings, verses 7 on to verse 11. Check this out. Check this out. Now, this is when... Uh, Jeroboam had a son, and he went. He sent his wife in disguise to who was it? Ahijah the prophet, who was blind. And the Lord's like, eh, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to you about her her child. And uh, the Lord's like, okay, that child, he's gonna make it. Okay, but he, he's not gonna make it. Mean that he's the only one who's gonna die in peace. Check this out. Here's the sentence against Jeroboam. Okay. You want to boot the door and uh, go up some other way? Shout through the crack your false uh, religion? Your uh, Catholic religion? Hmm? Your Calvinist religion? Hmm? Your Baptist religion? Your moron religion? Hmm? Your Jeho religion? On and on and on? Your Jesus? Huh? Go. 7 on to verse 11. Go tell Jeroboam, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, For as much as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it thee, and yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart, to do that only which was right in mine eyes, Yes, David was a man who sought after, went after God's own heart. David did not have the heart of God. Okay, watch out for that, okay? But has done evil above all that were before thee. For thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and has cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring 
I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away done, till it be gone. Pisseth against the wall. Remove all the males. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Him that is shut up. Everything. Everything. And he compares the house of Jeroboam. Remember, you and I today, saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. We are of the house of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? We are of his house, all right? Jeroboam, the house of Jeroboam, who booted the door, went up some other way, okay? Was anti, against, and replaced. The Lord compared him to be taken away as dung. <laughs> that just did. Think about that. You, whoever you are, going after another Jesus. My Jesus wasn't doing that. My Jesus. Who is your Jesus? Is your Jesus the Jesus of the Scriptures? Do you, are you, you better be aware of the fire that you're playing with. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay? God gets angry. God's angry at the wicked every day. You read in the book of Revelation how our Lord Jesus Christ will kill the children with death. Okay? How he hates things. Okay? You need to wake up. You need to be very... What Jesus are you believing on? If, you, if you're reading the Bible, you're not believing on the real Jesus. Hmm? Put that in your pipe and smoke it, huh? Hmm? The morons, the Mormons, then it, it's not the real Jesus. Huh? The Jesus of Catholicism, the Jesus of Christianity. 99.9% .9 of the Christians you are going to meet are Trinitarians. That's not the Jesus of the Scriptures. What Jesus are you believing on? Hmm? Come. Let us reason together. You and I. Okay? Okay. Therefore, okay, we already read that. Verse 11. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. And him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord hath spoken it. And the dogs, the thing about the dogs, hmm. The thing about dogs. Um, 1 Kings chapter 16. 1 Kings chapter 16. Is that the one? Uh, we want 16 verses 29 on to verse 33. In the lineage of Jeroboam. And how we just read about here in, um, where, was, where were we just at? In uh, 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 14 verse 10. There, uh, verse 11. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. Dogs eat. First Kings chapter 16. Verses 29 on to verse 33. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Even, a, even worse than Jeroboam did. Yeah, how do you know that? And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing 
for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal. I believe Ethbal means servant of Baal. That's what, I believe that's what that means. King of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Baal. The Baal-like religion, which is modern Catholicism, which has its flavors in masonry, with the phallus, the steeples on the church buildings. Okay? And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. And see, that thing about Jeroboam, okay? And look at, uh, while we're in 16, look at verses 1 and 3. Here is the stigma that Jeroboam, and you look this up in Scripture, uh, there comes a point within Scripture, whenever Jeroboam is mentioned, it's mentioned as he that made Israel to sin. Verses 1 and verse 3 in 1 Kings chapter 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Basha, saying, For as much as I exalted thee out of the dust, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and thou hast walked in the way of Jeroboam, and hast made, and hast made my people Israel to sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins. Behold, I will take away the posterity of Basha, and the posterity of his house, and will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Go to 1 Kings chapter 22 now. 1 Kings chapter 22. This, this, the warning is, why we're looking at this now specifically, if you're worshiping and praying to another Jesus, who is not the Jesus of the scriptures, the danger that awaits you is, un you can't even begin to fathom. But see, that other Jesus, of the pluralities of Jesuses that you are being offered, he's not angry at you. He loves you unconditionally. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. You, you just, you know, and, and prayer, you don't need to pray. Just save yourself by your thoughts. Or you're special. You're special because God has elected you. Others are not elect. They, they, they're contrary to God's word, but they're, they're not elect like you are. You're special. You're special. You're black. You're special. You're of the elect. You're from England. You're special. You're one of the elect. Hey, hey, Brad, you're reading the authorized version that came from England. Yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So, and, and, and remember the ten. <laughs> Those idiots from Shepherd's Chapel just came to my mind. But the, the, remember the ten tribes are, <laughs> are in England, right? right? You're special. You're elect. What Jesus? What Jesus? Hmm? Or even better. You're... You're the one in the middle. You worship the Jesus in the middle, don't you? Who's one of three persons that make one God. <laughs> but here's the stigma that you see Jeroboam branded with. 1 Kings 22, verses 51 on to verse 53. And we're only going to look at two occurrences at this because there are a plethora of them, especially going on since then uh, in uh, 2 Kings as well. Uh, Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, walked in the way of his father and in the way of his mother 
uh, uh, Jezebel. And in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. That's the stigma that Jeroboam is branded with in Scripture. Jeroboam, like, um, for example, um, uh, what's his name? Nicodemus, who went to Jesus by night. Hmm? Nicodemus. Nicodemus, who I believe is in heaven. Absolutely. But there was a stigma that Nicodemus was branded with. You only see it once, but it's something that Nicodemus, who went to Jesus by night. Night. Secretly. So people wouldn't accuse him. So he wouldn't lose his place of position or get killed. Hmm? But they would go to him secretly because they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. Verse 53. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to Israel the Lord and provoked to anger. Excuse me. The Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. That's the poison of what Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And one more, 2 Kings 3, 3. Like I said, you can look this up. Just look up Nebat, okay? Or Jeroboam. Look up the words, okay? And you can see this is a stigma that he is well branded with. Uh, First Kings chapter, uh, Second Kings chapter three. Uh, let's read verses one on to verse three. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned twelve years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother. For he put away the images of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. The sin of Jeroboam. What he thought of. What, do you remember what we looked at? Go back to 1 Kings chapter 16. Okay. Okay, where was that? Um, uh, where was that when we looked at? Uh, where, where, where we looked at? Where, where did we? Oh, uh, eleven. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Look at what Jeroboam did. All right. Uh, where is that? That is that twelve that we looked at that at? Yes, that is twelve. Okay, sorry, I'll get us there. First Kings chapter twelve. Go back there. Okay, look at what Jeroboam did. Okay, who had the promises of God. He had the promise of God that if he did it his way, he would be established. But what happened? Hmm? And verse 26 and in 1 Kings 12 again, Jeroboam said in his heart, God knows your heart. Yeah, it sure does. Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. Then he takes counsel and makes calves. And look at verse 33. Okay? So he offered upon the altar which he had made. He had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart. God knows your heart. Yes, he sure does. And ordained a feast unto the children of Israel. And he offered upon the altar and burnt incense that he did. He made it up in his own mind. He booted the door out of the way. You know what he did? You know what that is? You know what that is? <laughs> Isaiah 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. 
I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, dear friend. Dear friend. Dear friend. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will, not, will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And let's, uh, let's keep reading, okay? This parable spake Jesus unto them, and they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. <laughs> Want to boot the door, huh? Yeah, and be like Jeroboam. Yeah. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Reference unto the redemption of the purchased possession. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, hired by Rome and the Vatican, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and known, and, and known of mine. And the Lord has the seal. The Lord knows those that are his. Friend, whoever you are, examine yourself. See that you are in actually the true faith that was once delivered unto the saints. What Jesus? There are so many Jesuses out there, it's not funny. Examine yourself. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Okay? Let's reason together, you and I. Because as was the judgment against Jeroboam. You live your life serving another Jesus and justify everything that is contrary to God. What a waste. That is going to be it for this video. Um, this was actually not the video I was planning to do. That, that happens quite a bit, but... Um, Thank you, brethren. Thank you for your prayers. Please pray for one another. Um, many of us are hurting and suffering and going through struggles right now. A lot of us. Never forget. Never forget, brother, sister. Satan will win some battles. But the Lord wins the war. The horse is prepared for the day of battle. But safety is of the Lord. 
Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I love you. See you in the next video.